Good, good morning, Mount Gilead. This is uh, Mike Bridgewater again, and today is May 6th of 2020, and it is a beautiful day outside. Hope everybody's got a nice hot cup of coffee. I've got my uh, tribute to our Mooresville police officer uh, cup here. So, um, this morning we're going to spend a little bit of time in the book of Acts of the Apostles. So if you have your Bibles handy, go ahead and find the book of Acts and we'll actually get to chapter 10 here in just a little bit. Um, I first wanted to talk about Caesarea and this is where the story will take place today. And Caesarea was built by Herod back in uh, 25 BC to 12 BC and it was a it was a modern Roman city and it had a on this side here is a is a hippodrome which is a horse track and they would have had chariot races and things like that at the at the hippodrome and and this picture here is the big theater that they had in Caesarea where they would have had uh, outdoor plays and this is most likely the spot where Paul gave his defense a couple times later in the in the book of Acts so um, it's a really beautiful place if you uh, if you go to Google Maps and just do a search on Caesarea National Park you can go to the satellite view and um, zoom in and you can see all the ruins that are in in Caesarea they have uh, they have a bathhouse they have uh, um, what else they have? They, have? they had a palace there. It was just a very modern city. Um, it was a Roman city. It was the, the capital of the province during the Roman times there back in Bible, Bible times. So it's located on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean, about 35 miles north of the modern city of Tel Aviv. So Caesarea was the um, location of multiple events during the book of Acts, and we're going to do a flyover of Acts chapter 10 today. So we're a few years after the ascension, probably seven or eight years after the ascension from the Mount of Olives. The church has been growing quite a bit. Stephen has been martyred. Saul has uh, seen the light and has now become Paul. And Peter is just doing some miraculous healings uh, that are recorded there in, in, the, in the first nine chapters of Acts. <clears throat> then in chapter 10, we're introduced to this new character and a new face, and his name is Cornelius. And we learn quite a bit about Cornelius. Um, I really like the way Luke uh, puts all these little details in there, and if you go through, you can glean out that he was a centurion, so he was a Roman um, and a Gentile, but he was a God-fearing man. And when, the <clears throat> and when they use that term God-fearing in the book of Acts, it means that that they had given up on the polytheistic view that the, the Romans had of, you know, worshiping the uh, Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and, and all those uh, false gods and had adopted the, uh, the mono, monotheistic view of the, the Jewish people, but they had not become uh, a Jew. They had not been proselytized properly. Uh, he was also a generous man, and it also says he was a man of prayer. And he also had um, a vision, and it was visited by an angel who told him that his prayers, has been, prayers had been heard. And that's real comforting, comforting to know that your prayers are heard and that he was to uh, take some of his men of his household and he was to send them um, to Joppa to get Simon Peter and bring him back to his house. Then the, then the story shifts down to Joppa and we learn a few things about uh, Simon Peter. At this time, it's Simon's living in Joppa with his with a friend and who who is a tanner. And you may be familiar with the town of Joppa. This is the town that uh, Jonah fled to when he was trying to uh, not do the will of God. He he went to Joppa to get on a boat to to get away from his calling. And and Peter has a vision. Um, the as well and in this vision it's a it's a very strange vision and it's actually repeated three times and the voice tells him three times it says what God has made clean do not call common and and P 
Peter is, is holding on to a lot of his uh, Jewish traditions. He's, uh, he, he says, well, no, I don't want to eat that. I've never eaten anything that is unclean or common. And Peter has also given some instructions that Cornelius' men are coming, and they're going to go back, and he needs to go with them back to Caesarea. So on the next day, uh, Peter and Cornelius meet up, and, and Peter must have had, um, you know, thought about this vision and everything. And, and he makes a point uh, right when he gets there that just being in the household was against the law for a, a upright Jewish person. But God had shown him in this vision that he should not call any person common or unclean. And, and that's always been the case because you can go all the way back to Deuteronomy 10, 17, and you can read that for the Lord your God, for the... For the Lord, your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribes. <clears throat> and it is now when Peter shares the gospel with Cornelius' household, and he does this <clears throat> rather quickly because we learned last week that Jesus was very famous throughout the land, and he didn't have to he didn't have to do a lot of explaining, but he just he points out six really quick things to uh, Cornelius. First, that Jesus was preaching the good news of peace through Jesus, and this peace that he's preaching is the peace that is available between man and God, and you can read about that. Paul explains that principle in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. He also told him about Jesus' ministry of healing and casting out demons, Jesus' suffering and crucifixion, and his resurrection from the dead, and the subsequent um, interaction that he had with his witnesses where he was eating with them um, talking with them it was there was a lot of interaction after his resurrection and then he makes the bold statement that everyone in, who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins in his, through his name then to wrap things up in verse 44 through 47 the Holy Spirit is poured out on Cornelius's household and it was just like it was on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't some different Holy Spirit. It was the same type of event that they had back on the day of Pentecost. And then the people in Cornelius' household were baptized that same day. So what can we take away from um, the story of Cornelius and Peter and Joppa and uh, Caesarea? And I studied this for the last few days, and there's a lot of things you could take away you know maybe the first thing is maybe maybe you know a Cornelius and uh, you need to go have a conversation with him or her um, the other thing is you know maybe maybe we should take some of Cornelius's traits and apply those to our own lives he had a he had a lot of good traits he was a, a man of integrity he was a man of influence he was generous he was a prayer warrior um, maybe we could uh, take some lessons from Peter, uh, be willing to let go of some of our traditions, be willing to go and share the gospel, even to those people who you don't think deserve it. And lastly, be prepared to uh, go home and tell your friends what happened. Because if, if you read the first, 11 verse, first 18 verses of chapter 11, that's what Peter does. He goes back and he tells the story of how the Holy Spirit was again poured out onto the Gentiles. So as Peter so eloquently stated at the end of the end of his second book in Peter 3, 8, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. So it's a beautiful day outside. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll uh, see you next week.